Hi, this is Tom with another Blender tutorial. In this video, we're going to make some super realistic packaging for your product renders. I'm going to teach you how to transform your 2D package designs into beautiful 3D boxes with seams, folds, and surface imperfections. We're going to go through two box designs. First, a simple one with only a few folds, but is a great practice model. And then I'll go through a more complex one I did for my retro computer, which will be much more representative of what real packaging will look like. With that, let's start. Thanks to my retro computer for allowing me to use their packaging design for the Commodore 64. Case in this video. Check out their awesomely retro products at myretrocomputer.com. Let's start with a simple box. First, import your simple cube design into Blender as a reference image. If you need one to work with, then you can download this one for free on my GitHub along with the art for later use. Then add a plane and go into edit mode. Now you want to trace out the shape of the design by extruding vertexes and filling in the areas that make up the face using the fill command. Stay in top down view to remove any perspective. This should be a 2D shape for now. Next, add a solidifier modifier to give it some thickness. I've shown some good widths for certain types of material on screen. Then, in the materials section, set the rim offset to 1. This allows us to use a different material for the edges. And whilst you're in the modifiers tab, add a bevel modifier with 4 segment. You can play around with the width once you've folded the design, but the basic idea is that this rounds off the edges and makes it look more like a piece of cardboard, which is what we want. Before we fold the box, we should first UV unwrap the model to prevent issues with seams, and it also makes aligning the box art to the unwrapped UVs much easier. To do this, go select all and project from view. Once more, it's extremely important that you're in top-down mode during this step. Now for the fun bit. To fold the model, first change the pivot point to 3D cursor. Then select the edge you want to fold and press Shift S and on the pie menu, select cursor to select. Then select the faces you want to fold and rotate along one axis. Repeat this for each fold on the design. To do this most efficiently, you should fold multiple tabs at once like this. Now adjust each tab and face so that there are no intersections between them. Do this by moving the separate vertices or rotating the faces in a similar way to when we folded the box earlier. Any intersections will ruin the look of your box, so spend a couple of minutes and the results will be infinitely better. Remember, you may need to change the bevel width to get the look you're after. That's it for modeling. Now it's time for shading where it finally comes to life. We're first going to add a plane. This is to allow for reflections and shadows of the box. Next, in the shading workspace, add in the two nodes which will form the basis of the shader, an image texture node and a texture coordinate node. The image texture node contains the design and the texture coordinate node tells it where to go. The image texture should be plugged into the color input for the principal BSDF node. Then we want to add a second shader for the edges. Just add a basic BSDF, set the color to be white, light brown, or gray, depending on the type of cardboard you want. If the design doesn't line up with the UVs, you can move, rotate, and scale the image to be correct in the UV editor. Now back to the shaders. To make them more realistic, you can add some surface imperfection by adding a noise texture and a map range node. Simply connect the noise texture to either the generated or object coordinates, and the value of the noise texture into the top socket of the map range. Then plug the output of that into the roughness slider of the principal BSDF. Now you can change the two sliders at the bottom of the map range node. They represent the minimum and maximum amounts of roughness, where 0 is mirror-like and 1 is like chalk. For cardboard, both values should be around 0.5, but they should never be the same. You should now have a super realistic cardboard box. And now you know the basics of how to turn a 2D box design into a 3D model. This method is great because the process can be used for pretty much any design. But for more complex designs, there are several ways to improve and speed up the process. I'm going to go over the ones I found whilst doing the box for my retro computer. For radius corners, instead of manually tracing the shape, add a circle and remove all the vertexes which don't make up the corner. Then line it up, join the gaps and fill it in as normal. If you have a tricky curved section like this, using a bezier curve can produce a much better shape than manual approximations. Just move the handles to transform it to the shape you want. Then using the search function, convert the curve to a mesh and join it up to the rest of the part. Another trick to speed up the process is to use a mirror modifier to cut your time and effort in half, or even into quarters. Just make sure to apply the modifier before making the UV map, otherwise it will not work properly. You'll also need a symmetrical design to do this, so don't even try without one. The final thing I want to advise you on is to make sure that your mesh is entirely made of quads. This means that the mesh is only made of faces with four vertices. This will mean that the normals will be calculated correctly, which is not always guaranteed with n gon meshes. Doing this step will make your model more stable for the solidify and bevel modifier. This can either be done manually by adding vertices in the blank spaces, or you can use the grid fill function. This will fill the area with quads much more quickly than manual methods. However, sometimes it produces a very questionable result. So I'd recommend trying the grid fill, but if the result isn't great, do it manually. 
And that's it for this one. If you like this video, hit that button. And if you want to see more like this one, check out the relevant content on screen and perhaps subscribe to show your appreciation. If you have any questions or suggestions, don't hesitate to let me know in the comment section below. And thanks for watching.